Mulroy, stand up. This motorcycle can stand and move on its own when called by recognizing the user's face and voice. It's like something out of a science fiction movie. These presentations attracted a huge amount of attention at Japan's biggest motor show held in the fall of 2017. The robotics industry is picking up momentum throughout the world. Let's explore the front lines of robotics. Catch Japan. Karakuri mechanical dolls move on their own, relying on clever mechanics. They became popular in Japan around the 17th century, and some of the dolls were extremely intricate. They aim to accurately mimic the movements made by people. This craftsmanship can also be seen in bipedal robots and dog robots sold as household toys in recent years. Japanese people have a preference for robots with charm that they can relate to and those that can act as substitutes for people and pets. In the world of business, Japanese companies account for more than half of the top 10 companies in the world making industrial robots. Japan is a true robotics powerhouse, and today, a new on-site revolution in manufacturing is about to take place. Let's take a closer look at some of the leaders in these innovative fields. Japan's population of over 126 million is expected to decrease to less than 90 million by the year 2060. This rate of decline is by far the fastest of the 36 OECD countries. The construction industry in particular is expected to lose 1.1 million skilled laborers over the next 10 years. Securing labor in the future has become a major issue. This is Shimizu Corporation, one of the biggest construction companies in Japan, founded in 1804 with around 15,000 employees. The company is currently involved in robotics development. It's known as the Shimizu Smart Site, a next generation production system for improving productivity at construction sites through cooperation between robots and people. A part of this system was unveiled to the Japanese media during a press tour of the company's robot laboratory in Tokyo. Autonomous robots are expected to meet the demand for improved productivity and safety in the construction industry. This is RoboCarrier. It's equipped with AI. It can ascertain its location and recognize obstacles using laser sensors and other equipment to find its own way. The operator chooses the type of material and the destination on a tablet, and the robot delivers the materials to the designated location by coordinating itself with an elevator, unassisted by internet connectivity or remote control to indicate where to go.
Next is Robo Welder. These robots work in pairs to carry out welding completely unassisted. They use lasers to ascertain the shapes of grooves to ensure accurate welding. Last is Robo Buddy. It uses one arm to hold panels weighing as much as 30 kilograms in place, while the other arm attaches them onto the ceiling. This robot uses image and laser sensors to accurately ascertain the position of the panel, allowing it to carry out work with utmost precision. It's been estimated that using a Shimizu Smart Site system, including these robots, to construct a 30-story building with a standard floor space of around 3,000 square meters will achieve personnel savings of over 70%. The manufacturing industry in Japan has always relied on production line systems and warehousing technology, the driving force behind advances in robotics. Transportation plays an extremely important role in the production and logistics of all industries. Daifuku, a leading manufacturer of logistics systems and automated warehouses with offices in over 40 countries and regions, has one of the biggest plants in the world, located in the center of Japan. The company develops, manufactures, and provides automation and logistics solutions and services to meet a variety of needs. They provide behind-the-scenes support to Japan's manufacturing industry. Daifuku was founded in Osaka in 1937 as a manufacturer of mainly press forging machines for iron making and various types of cranes. The company grew rapidly based on material handling while repeatedly innovating advances in automation. It provided behind the scenes support to Japan's industries during the period of rapid economic growth beginning in the mid 1950s.現在においてもやく半分日本国内の半分ぐらいのシェアを持っておりますえ他館という機能ではですねなくてはならない商品で必ずその大きな物流センターには立体自動倉庫が納入をされておりますえ最新の機種との相性が良くて泊まりにくい
This Clean Room FA system was developed for industries that require clean environments, such as in the production of semiconductors and food containers. The system consists of wireless charging devices and low friction rollers. This prevents the generation of contaminants. The high speed and efficient system relying on logistics technology provided by this company is currently spreading throughout the world. One of Asia's biggest international exhibitions in IT and electronics was held in October 2017 outside of Tokyo. This robot babysitter is equipped with AI. A built-in camera and other sensors recognize facial expressions, movements, and voices, allowing it to teach and entertain children. It also has no wheels to avoid the danger of children getting their fingers caught or other accidents. It moves by rotating its translucent outer body. The robot maintains its posture by using gyro and other sensors. This is a remote controlled robot that moves in sync with a person wearing a head mounted display and gloves, almost as if it were an avatar. The person controlling the robot can also see what the robot is seeing through a camera installed in the robot's eyes and hear the sounds around the robot through microphones built into the robot's ears. Tactile information is conveyed to the user through the gloves. This is a table tennis playing robot equipped with AI. It can continue a rally just like a human being. It can also use two arms to serve. These cameras detect the opponent's movements and returns shots after instantly calculating the ball's trajectory. It can hit balls at 40 to 80 kilometers per hour, depending on the opponent and conditions. It can even predict when a smash is coming from the movements made by the opponent before hitting the ball. It was developed by an electronics manufacturer with some of the most advanced sensing technologies in Japan. The company offers production systems to inspire new ideas through cooperation between people and robots. Yamaha Motor boasts the world's second biggest share of the market in motorcycles. And the company has also achieved legendary feats at numerous races. Since founding the company in 1955, Genichi Kawakami, the first president, used to say, if you're going to make something, make it the best. Based on his words, the company launched its motorcycle business and using the technology honed through making compact engines, began developing motorboats. Yamaha also developed electric bicycles and a variety of other products based on the concept of developing something completely new. Then, in 2017, the company launched a project that had a major impact on the world. The details have been publicized through Yamaha Motors' official YouTube channel. I am Motorola. I was created to surpass you. It was the development of a motorcycle riding robot. For three years, I have grown.
In this project, the challenge was for Motobot to race against Valentino Rossi, known as the greatest rider of all time, with nine world championship wins over 15 years. The project was launched in 2015 by a small team of select members, carefully chosen from the industrial robot and motorcycle sectors. Mobility の世界に AI だ、自動運転だって新しい流れが入ってくることで、まあにヤマハがあの今後どうあるべきかっていったところを、まあ今。我々ない技術っていったところもどうやって獲得するんだっていった危機感だとかそういった思いがありました。They took on a new challenge。今回あのオートバイを改造せずに、えー、人型で走るまあ人と同じような入りの操作するロボットで世界チャンピオンに何度もなったことがあるロシアに勝てればあのムーンショットを起こせるんじゃないかとそういった思いでこれがまあ。They had the know-how in mobility control technology, but given the lack of time for development, they realized that their robotics technology was inadequate. They decided to make use of open innovation in collaboration with a company in the U.S. Sara International の engineer はまあロボットを動かす specialist っていうところであったのと同時に、ヤマハ私たちはバイクを操る specialist なので、このスペシャリスト同士が合わさって初めてモトボットのプロジェクトが成り立ったのかなというふうには思います。The Motobot project took on the challenges of getting a robot to ride an unmodified motorcycle available on the market by operating the throttle, clutch, and brakes just like a human being. The development team laid down a schedule and set themselves a time limit to carry out this project. The conditions were defined, and then, if they were to get it, a robot is generally higher in power, higher in speed, and higher in speed. So, it can be found in the future. まあ、人間のチャンピオンのロッシ選手においてもあのもしかしたらあのいいレベルまでいけるんじゃないかっていった期待を込めてました。This project aimed to hone basic technologies, so the race was simplified to measuring lap times on a special circuit with no obstacles. In order to win against Rossi, one of the goals was to go faster than 200 km per hour on the straight. The most important point was to make the robot light. To achieve this, they decided to use GPS positional information instead of an image recognition system to control the motorcycle. A weight shifting device needed for cornering like a human rider was also omitted, and they decided to maneuver the motorcycle using only the hand controls. The biggest challenge was finding the optimal trajectory without relying on weight shifting when cornering. The team carried out repeated simulations and tests. Then, in September 2017, Motobot marked a milestone. To achieve autonomous driving at over 200 kilometers per hour, but couldn't match Rossi's lap times. Human beings' that linear efficiency to the robot is difficult to give. I think. In practical terms, if human riders are driving in the circuit and are going to hit a corner, they will go over speed and they will hit the speed limit. If they are going to hit the speed limit, Then they can adjust the speed of the car and adjust the speed of the car. So, 
ロボットにはそういうことを最初教えてなかったのでその車速がどんどんどんどん速くなってくる中でそういう臨機応変さをどのように与えるのかっていうところがなかなか難しかったチャレンジングなところだったかなというふうには思います。The temperature, humidity, wind, and other conditions on the circuit change constantly, and the tire traction also differs from lap to lap. Everything had to be programmed, and the robot had to respond to environmental conditions as well. The three-year Motobot project came to a close. Three years, the Motobot project came to a close. Three years, the Motobot project came to a close. Three years, the Motobot project came to a close. そこで得た技術や知見気づきっていったものを既存の事業だとか新しい事業に生かしていくっていうプランでしたので今まさにそのステージにいます一つだけまああの参考例としてご紹介しますともともとオートバイってあのハンドル操作と体の重心移動っていう2つの操作系で走行できる乗り物だなんですがハンドルだけでもオートバイっていうのは走れたっていうことに気づけたっていうこと。The members of the Motobot project demonstrated the enormous potential of robots, while also rediscovering the potential of human ability. What lies ahead in the future for human beings and robots? The global robotics market in the private sector is expected to expand to over 160 billion US dollars a year by 2022.